Databases have changed considerably the past 10 years. As data volumes have skyrocketed, we threw out the paradigm of one size fits all. Instead, we now have three distinct database types to solve our data storage and retrieval needs. First, row-oriented databases are the traditional databases we're used to. In databases such as MySQL, each row is stored consecutively on disk. Given the table below, let's illustrate how it will appear on disk. Each row is stored together. Thus, if I knew where the row began, I could easily extract all elements of that row. Because I can pull all columns of that row very easily, I can perform transactions with very little cost. Thus, you use row-oriented databases as transactional databases. Flipping around a bit, columnar databases are relational databases, but they store each column consecutively on disk. Let's look at that example again. Check out Abraham Lincoln's department and salary. In a columnar database, we store the first name column consecutively on disk. We do the exact same for the last name, department, and salary. Therefore, we can extract down individual columns very quickly. This extraction is quite helpful for analytic queries and databases. Thus, you use column-oriented databases as analytic databases. Let's compare them side by side. The data is the same, and we can still reconstruct the rows if we need to. However, we store them in completely different ways. If that didn't confuse you, let's now talk about NoSQL. NoSQL does not mean I hate SQL or anything bad. It simply means not only or not ordinary SQL. There are hundreds of NoSQL variants on the market today. Each fits their specific niche and need. Most of these variants fit within one of three categories, key value, doc, and column store. Each has their major benefit, and they all do well with unstructured or semi-structured data. Yet no conversation is complete without talking about Hadoop. While Hadoop, its file system, and MapReduce are not databases, they are commonly used as a vital piece of a complete data warehousing scheme. The Hadoop distributed file system places data on different nodes or servers within a cluster. In this example, we have a three node cluster. Each node has access to data which can be processed. MapReduce can be used to call these three nodes. As an example, consider a simple function such as adding columns A and B. First, we must map the function. We give the, that function to the three nodes. Those nodes then yank data and process the information in parallel. Once completed, they all provide their separate answer for the portion of the data set they analyzed. Since each node gives an answer, we now need to reduce to one value. The reducer brings that down to one solution. This approach to data manipulation and extraction is very popular with companies with extremely large data sets. Clusters exist today with multi-petabytes worth of data on thousands of nodes in a single cluster. In the end, row, column, and NoSQL are quite complementary. They typically don't compete. Competition does exist within each of these broad categories, and many companies utilize one or several databases from each category within their data warehouse system. Thank you for joining us. If you have any questions or would like to download our white paper on the differences between row, column, and NoSQL, please visit us at www.infobrite.com.